nice to have a musical opening. Hello, everybody. It's fantastic. Well, wow. it's fantastic. We're supposed to have a chat here, and you are forced to listen. That's what you call a captive audience, right? <laughs> so they're going to close the doors in a minute. And we get to talk about um, how the world is changing, basically. And, and, and we actually started this conversation an hour ago, so you'll be uh, in the middle of it. And, um, so far, we've been fascinating, too. Yes. Very enjoyable. I mean, the whole, the whole topic, uh, you, you can approach this from a very technical point of view, like uh, artificial intelligence, how does it work, and so on. But maybe it's more interesting to, to see what's the outcome or what's the way to this. Yeah, you know, Chris and, and everybody, uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, digital transformation. Everybody's talking about digital transformation. And, you know, the question is, what is that all about? You know, what is a digital transformation? And the truth is, although everyone's talking about it, that's not actually the destination. You know, it, what people are trying to get to is to create smarter businesses and a smarter world. And digital transformation is really just the foundation to get there. You have to digitize everything. So in, in my eyes, the, the, all, the whole economy already uses digital in some way. Um, and some, uh, especially the businesses that are very digital at their cores, like the financial industry or uh, the telco industry and all these industries, um, they have the hardest time because they have been using all this digital technology, but they have not digitized at all. They have not digitized their business. And maybe we can give some good examples of industry uh, that, that have not gone as digital um, as these two to see how you can adopt the new technologies faster. I see we have a picture of a very we'll, cool we'll get car. That, oh, it's not there. No, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> I want to talk about that oh, later. I wanted to talk about this right away. I know you're excited in, about in, this. In, we do have something exciting to share at the end here. Chris is going to give it away before I get there. But uh, sorry, <laughs> let, me, let me talk a little bit about this. So, so this idea of going digital, you know, what we've done so far is we started with transactions. You know, they were the first thing we digitized, the interactions between people, between partners, between our social interactions. You know, we've done that. We've digitized things. We've put things on the web. We've started to create e-commerce in a very significant way. Um, we're now moving into a new wave, which is around the digitization of everything physical. So IoT, which we hear a lot about, uh, we have got the car up there now. I wasn't going to talk about that yet. Um, but we're getting to a point, and we can take that off. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but we're talking about now digitizing everything. And you know, here in Germany, the heart of Industry 4.0, we're talking a lot about factories. We're talking about the digitization of machines, telling us what's wrong. Um, it, we're talking about that in healthcare, digitizing everything. In retail, we can start to make sure that you know, food turns up uh, and is in good shape. And I'll give you an example here. So we know that in the world, one in nine people are chronically hungry. They don't have food. Uh, very, you know, there's just a, a lack of food. But when you look at the food supply chain and you look at what's going on there, one third of all fresh food spoils. One third. That's $48 billion worth of food every year that spoils. It's unbelievable. You know, 20% of all meat, 20% of all dairy, 45% uh, of all fresh produce spoils. And it spoils somewhere in the supply chain. We don't know where, but it's either on the shelf, it could be at the farm, it could be on the truck, it could be everywhere. And things like IoT are a chance for us to understand that better and to start to eradicate those issues in the supply chain to ensure that things stay cooler, longer, that we find out where they break down. We can start to, to, we can start to learn from that. I mean, so this, is, this is the actual challenge here, right? No one would believe we're talking about food and how food spoils and so on. What would that have to do with artificial intelligence or cognitive computing? Yeah. Um, and in, in my view, actually, these technologies are the foundation for creating this kind of a better world, if you want, because the only way we have, we have industrialized our entire world. We've industrialized our food production. We've industrialized right. the supply chain. We've industrialized the delivery, logistics, and everything. Um, but we have done it in a way so we can handle it from a human perspective. That means we can only handle such and so much data that is coming in. So we've organized everything in processes and we've organized everything um, in hierarchical systems and so on. And this is why there's fallout in it. And now when we get uh, computers that are smart, that can actually handle a lot of unstructured data, like our brain can handle a lot of unstructured data when we see, see or hear or touch and feel, um, 
a lot of unstructured data that is coming in from all these processes, these processes become much more um, adapted to the actual good they're dealing with. And this is why AI or cognitive computing or whatever you want to call it, the, new, the next wave of uh, digital technology actually enables us to move away from the industrial concept more to a concept that, that is outcome-based. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. You know, um, the, the, the use of cognitive computing, and let me explain what that is. So, you know, a lot of chatter about artificial intelligence, and, you know, that has good and bad connotations. You know, we, we've all seen the, the TV science fiction movies where, you know, the, the, the uh, the computer you know, takes over the world or something like that. You know, the reality of cognitive computing is, is actually really interesting. You know, the origins are that we wanted to find a way to help humans, to augment humans and their intelligence. And this is sort of the, the, uh, the continuation of what's been going on from progress in the world for a long time. You think about it in the 1960s and the, you know, the birth of the mainframe computing, that was all about automating the back office. You know, we went through a phase with the internet and with engagement systems and social systems where we were augmenting the human interaction experience. Yeah, that's been the sort of the second wave. And this third wave now is about making industries work smarter, professions work smarter, you know, doctors work smarter, uh, professions in a manufacturing space work smarter, and we're building computers that can take in huge amounts of information research that no, no single human could ever bring in, we can bring that in. And we can bring it in with industry, industry domain, we can bring it in in multiple languages, we can bring it in as video, as audio, in many different forms. We can couple that information with things like weather information, social media information, uh, stock information. We can bring all of this together and we can help humans make better decisions. So when we think about cognitive, we think about systems that can understand that can learn and that can reason, that can actually provide context and find patterns in the information. And so that's really the power of it. And what I was talking about before with IoT, you know, we think when we take all that data that's coming from the Internet of Things and we match it with industry context, you can get very intelligent outcomes. Well, I mean, if I look at our first application, right, this is just the first application. We put a sysadmin and we put him in a box. Um, and you should think that the sysadmins don't like this. Um, if we replace 90% of them with a the machine, actually they love it because they don't, A, there's no way they can handle the work that's coming in from IoT applications because it just went exponential, the kind of data and work coming in, and B, they have much better things to do. So we, we never have any problems um, with, with guys like having an, a fear of the machine, like taking their place or anything like this. We have people like exactly like you say, feeling augmented and getting back their time to do something much more impactful. Yeah, I see it actually, uh, you know, in every field as I mentioned, but one area that I find fascinating and exactly to your point, uh, and I'll give an example here in the agriculture space. So there's a winery, uh, they have a, you know, 20,000 acres, they make great wine, a uh, company's called Gallo uh, Wineries. And, uh, you know, they, they were looking at how can we make wine in a more effective way? And they're using IoT to look at, you know, how their crops are growing and how much water they're using, you know, drones to have a look at are they yielding properly from all of the, the area. By leveraging IoT, they've been able to take out about 25% of the water consumption and they've been able to grow by about 26% the actual output from their winery. So they're producing more grapes, more wine, better quality, and they're doing it at a much lower cost as well. So using that information to get smarter in the way they produce food and, uh, and produce output. It, that's exactly the point, right? It's, it's not about replacing something that is totally fantastic with something new that might be not so fantastic but more expensive or faster. It's actually about helping people. Like is, do you think the IoT whole movement would be possible without the notions of cognitive or uh, computing and artificial intelligence technology? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, IoT, you know, it's not a new concept. We've been talking about smarter cities for a long time. We've been, you know, instrumenting machines. What, what's changed is the sensors have got much, much cheaper. You know, it's much cheaper now to instrument something up and to, to put something intelligent on it. We're able to gather that information and structure and secure that information in a much better way now. And, uh, you know, I think what's interesting about it is that now we want to understand, we're capturing all this information, what does it mean? 
And I think that what artificial intelligence and cognition bring is an ability to cut through the mess, all of that data that's being generated, and be able to cut to the pattern. You know, what's really going on? What action should I take? The only reason for all this technology is outcomes. It's about either improving the costs, you know, lowering costs, improving revenue, improving client experience or human experience, about transforming a business, about improving skills, or about improving the environment. I mean, those are the, the outcomes, you know, that we're aiming for. You know, the technology is interesting, but the outcome is what matters. Well, I mean, we've been talking about all these outcomes. Like, can we go to the car now, please? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, we're know, in the city of cars here, right? This so, is with so Audi and BMW. It's exciting to be in the city of cars. And, you know, I love these cars. And it was beautiful to come to, come to this great event in a, in a little BMW today. It was uh, very, very cool. But I am excited. We, we, we're introducing, uh, with a partner today, a company called Local Motors. And I'll talk about them first. This is a fascinating company. Uh, they have 55,000 developers, uh, none of whom work for the company. So they crowdsource all of their design, all of their development. Really fascinating, 55,000. By doing that, they've been able to cut uh, by one hundredth. So basically, they've, they're, they, they develop these cars at one hundredth of the cost of a traditional automaker, and they're able to produce a vehicle in about one fifth of the time. Really interesting model. They, they started off in 3D cars, so they, 3D car printing, I should say. So they print all the components of their car. But today, we're actually announcing with them in, uh, in Maryland in the United States. And actually, it doesn't happen for a couple of hours. So I'll ask you all to, for the next couple of hours uh, to, to, uh, to just look at the screen here. But in a couple of hours, we're announcing a vehicle which is self-driving and actually has Watson on board. If we could bring the car up, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. Could we bring the vehicle up on the screen? I'm sure it's coming back. Let's. <laughs> I can see them bringing it up here. There's a mouse on the uh, on the wheel here. But this car basically it's a vehicle. Uh, it's a 12-seater vehicle, and it has intelligence on board. So you can basically get on this vehicle. Still not up there. Can we bring the uh, the vehicle up, please? Bring the car back up. Um, so this vehicle, you can get on the vehicle, and you can say, I want to go to a restaurant like this, and I'll say, Well, there's one right nearby us. Let's go there. And so the intelligence on board will actually take you there. You can ask them what the weather's going to be like later on. How fast are we going? Could we go a different way? Are there things for us to see on the way there? And so it brings a lot of intelligence uh, on board. Do we, have the, uh, do we have the slide? So while we're waiting for the image to come up, I think this is really where it gets interesting, right? Is, um, <laughs> this is really where it gets interesting. I mean, everybody's heard about the Google self-driving cars, and we are seeing the autopilot in Tesla. Uh, and we've learned that actually there's no good argument to be made against a self-driving vehicle, right? It's much more efficient. Uh, it's much more environmentally friendly. It has, it's much more secure. Um, we can get there much cheaper, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I think it's especially important to have this discussion over here um, where we're so dependent on the auto industry uh, and where we pride ourselves in being at the forefront of technology. And the interesting part is that every auto company here has self-driving cars, and uh, maybe we're still afraid to bring those on the road. This is a very good example of it can be done and it should be done. Um, and it can be done in very new ways as well. What I think is very interesting in, in these uh, technical terms is that you get uh, from, from pure driving to actually combining this with understanding this and understanding what the goal of whoever is your passenger, not just getting from A to B, but also wanting to do something somewhere, that gives you a much broader range, right? Yeah, I think what's fascinating about this whole space, and you know, talking on a broader basis now, is there's lots of social implications here. You know, so we have insurance industries, for example. So you know, how does the insurance industry evolve from there? You know, obviously, risk still occurs, but it occurs in a very different way. It changes uh, as, as an industry. There's transformation that goes on there. Around the smart car, there's lots of conversations with entertainment companies, with cities. You know, how, how do we start to think about uh, you know, safety, policy, you know, registration of vehicles, insurance? There's a whole ecosystem around this. And you see this throughout the IoT conversation. Uh, there are designers. Think of buildings here. There are designers. There are builders. And there are operators. 
And buildings are fascinating too. You know, some of the, the innovation going on with putting sensors in concrete that can sense people moving in the building. Are there people in there? Should we have lights on on this floor today? I don't know if you realize this, but 43% of all energy that gets consumed in the world is consumed by buildings. A lot of our buildings, we leave the lights on the entire time. We leave the air conditioning running all the time. You know, we can get a lot smarter in the way buildings operate. Well, these lights are so hot, they're definitely not eco-friendly. Well, these are at least 5% right? of the total energy <laughs> consumption, so, I'm sure. Anyway, I think what is really, and, and maybe for the crowd, something interesting, we're making a real step here while I was talking about the goals that are happening. And, and uh, in energy consumption, you can see this as well. The interesting part is so far, a lot of cognitive technology, a lot of artificial intelligence technology, a lot of the like starting of this with machine learning. Machine learning is only a tiny part of it, right? So um, a lot of these technologies have so far been about pattern matching. I mean, driving is, is basically about pattern matching. And now we're adding right. that, that part that is only privy to humans, um, which is you work yourself towards a goal. Like driving somewhere, okay, that can happen at a site like you're doing it, um, but actually while you're getting somewhere, having the conversation, what do you want to do there? What, why do you want to, maybe you want to go somewhere else? And dealing with these, all these inaccuracies and so on, that is a major step. And if you want to see this in, in a term of visualization um, in there, then probably the step from a, an, a computer playing a game on a closed field like we've seen with Go, going to real strategy games where there is an infinite number of, of things going on, that might be the next step. But if we take this back to the real world, right? this is just for your visualization, but if we take this back to the real world, there is an infinite number of ways to make sure that we don't consume energy or that we consume energy the right way. If we just look at computers, um, which, which I'm familiar with, right? If you, if you just look at computers, it's, it's totally crazy. Mostly 90% of all computers just use energy and they, they don't do anything. They're just sitting there idle. The way of managing that in a much better way, I mean, that the energy we are wasting is just incredible. Yeah, I think you're right. So I think in summary, uh, we think that the IoT has tremendous potential to change the world for the better, to make us all uh, smarter. The addition of cognition and learning systems you know, to support that is an incredibly powerful opportunity to help humans realize you know, higher levels, higher productivity, higher outcomes, and frankly, to live better lives. Thank you very much for the time today. Thank you.